In this lecture, I want to provide an introduction to confidence intervals. Now, this lecture is just going to be the theory behind confidence intervals. We'll actually, in some follow-up lectures, talk about how you construct them. But this lecture is just a good theory-based introduction to confidence intervals. Okay, so first off, in this class, whenever we wanted to estimate the value of a parameter, we've actually been using what's called point estimate. So a point estimate is the value of a statistic, a value of a statistic that estimates the value of a parameter. And a point estimate is a single value estimate. So there's only one value when you calculate the point estimate. So for example, the sample mean x bar is the point estimate of the population mean mu. So what I'm saying here is, is when you don't know the population mean and you want to estimate it, you take a sample and you compute the sample mean. And that single value estimate is called a point estimate. Let me give you an example about computing a point estimate. So pennies minted after 1982 are made from 97.5% zinc and 2.5% copper. Okay, the following data represents the weight in grams of 17 randomly selected pennies. So here's, you know, we just grabbed 17 pennies at random, and these were all their corresponding weights. Okay, so let's treat this data as a simple random sample. Let's estimate the population mean weight of pennies minted after 1982. So if we want to estimate the population mean, right, we're just going to go back and just use this x bar, this point estimate. And all it is is the sample mean is if you add up all these values, you divide by 17, you get the sample mean to be 2.464 grams. Okay, so the point estimate mu here, the point estimate of mu here is this value, 2.464. But just recall from a previous lecture, right? So if you look back to the lecture that we did on um, sampling distributions, we said the weight of pennies minted after 1982 are approximately normally distributed, and we know the population mean, okay? We actually know the value of mu here. It's, it's 2.46 grams and a standard deviation of 0.02 meters. So our point estimate here was really close, right? Uh, if you look here, our point estimate was 2.464, but not exactly right. So our sample mean just overestimated the real mean a little bit. And we would expect that, right? Like this is just 17 pennies. So we just computed a sample mean from the 17 pennies. We wouldn't expect it to be exactly the real population. So if we took another sample, right, we'd get a different point estimate, we'd get a different sample mean. So going forward, when we estimate a parameter like mu, what we're gonna do is we're gonna estimate, the, estimate it with um, what we call an interval uh, estimate, all right? And this interval estimate will be called a confidence interval. So this lecture now is going to talk about what exactly is this confidence interval. So a confidence interval for an unknown parameter consists of an interval of numbers based on a point estimate. So a confidence interval is going to be a range of values. Okay, So it's going to have some what we call lower bound all the way to some upper bound. And, this, and our estimate is going to be this entire range of values. So the level of confidence represents the expected proportion of intervals that will, that will contain the parameter if a large number of different samples is obtained. I'll explain that in a second. And the level of confidence is denoted as this 1 minus alpha times 100%. So think of alpha like as how often you'll be wrong. Okay, so for example, a 95% confidence interval, alpha, you're going to be 95% confident in your results. You're going to be wrong 5% of the so what this means when I say represents the expected proportion of intervals that will contain the parameter. All right, so if I have 95% confident, this implies that if 100 different confidence intervals are constructed, each based on a different sample from the same population, you would expect if I'm not right 95% of the time, or I'm going to be 95% confident, you would expect 95 of the 100 intervals to contain the parameter and 5 to not include the parameter. All right, let me, let me give you... Uh, visual of this so you can understand exactly what I mean by that. Okay, so the weights of pennies minted after 1982, we know are approximately normally distributed. And the mean, the population mean is 2.46 grams. Okay, so suppose you sampled 17 pennies. Okay, and each time you did the sample, you con constructed a point estimate from that sample. And then you develop these confidence intervals. Okay, so I'm just going to give the confidence intervals here. Um, in, in coming lectures, we'll actually show you how you calculate them, but just take them as given for now. So you do this sample of 17 pennies 100 different times, and then you construct 100 interval estimates with 95% level of confidence. 
All right, so interval one, the first time you do it, you say, all right, well, look, I'm 95% confident that the mean weight of pennies minted after 1982 is between 2.4 and 2.48 grams. Well, look, 2.46 falls between this, so this interval got it right. The next time you do it, you say, okay, well, I'm 95% confident that the mean weight of pennies minted after 1982 is uh, somewhere between 2.39 and 2.47 grams. Yes, we, that one got it right as well because that's in that interval. Let's say the third time you do this, okay? You collect your 17 pennies and you say, okay, I am 95% confident that the mean weight is somewhere between 2.35 and 2.43 grams. You'll notice how the real mean, 2.46, is outside this. So this interval got it wrong. So if we're going to be 95% confident, we would expect if we were to do this 100 times, 95 of our 100 intervals would contain this 2.46 grams. Okay, so how do we construct confidence? So confidence intervals estimates, estimates for a population mean are of the form, you take your point estimate, okay, which we know is going back, is just X bar. And then you're going to add and subtract something. And what you add and subtract is what's called the margin of error. And there are two things that make up the margin of error that you'll see in the coming lectures, okay? One is the, um, what we call a critical value, and the other is called the standard error, which you have heard of. All right, so the margin of error of a confidence interval is just basically a measure of how accurate the point estimate is. All right, so obviously a smaller margin of error means the point estimate is more accurate. A larger margin of error indicates that the point estimate isn't as accurate. Okay, so the margin of error depends on three factors. Okay, the level of confidence, as the level of confidence increases, the margin of error also increases. So the only way you can be more confident in your result is making your intervals wider. The sample size, obviously as the sample size of a random sample increases, the margin of error should decrease, right, because your estimates are getting more accurate. And the standard deviation of this population, okay, the more spread there is in the population, the wider our interval will be for a given level of confidence. So in the following lectures, what you're going to see is we'll learn how to construct these confidence intervals for a population mean. So we'll learn two types, okay? The first one will be a confidence interval for a population mean where the population standard deviation is known. So for some reason, you're going to know what the population standard deviation is. Okay, this will be kind of, this first lecture here will be kind of an exercise in theory. And then the real, more real world application will be when we talk about confidence intervals for population mean with the population standard deviation is unknown, okay? And in this little second lecture here, we're gonna to have to learn a new statistical distribution called a t-distribution.